Hello everyone, today we are going to learn about basic lung ultrasound in emergency and critical care setting. Here is the outline of today's lecture. Number one, we are going to learn about the principles of lung ultrasound and why do we perform it in critically ill patients. Number two, we are going to learn the minimal requirement to get an optimal image and the techniques to acquire these images. We call it image acquisition. Number three, after we already learned how to acquire the optimal image, we are going to interpret it. Here, we must know by heart the physiological and pathological patterns of the lung ultrasound. And subsequently, we will learn about how to integrate all the knowledge that we have with clinical presentation of the patient in guiding the emergency treatment. The seven principles of lung ultrasound. The principle of lung ultrasound is described by the father of lung ultrasound, Daniel Lichtenstein. He is an intensivist in France. He mentioned that the lung ultrasound should be performed using a very simple technique. And as we all know, the thorax is one of the biggest area. Therefore, we have to determine the specific area. In the thorax, the air and fluid can mingle. But we have to remember the rules of gravity. The air will go up, the fluid will go down. All the signatures or the lung ultrasound pattern arise from the pleural line. Usually, we all hit air when we want to perform ultrasound. However, air for lung ultrasound is our friends. Why do we need to perform lung ultrasound? I share with you here a study, which is a prospective study, which done to compare the diagnostic accuracy of auscultation versus bedside chest x-ray versus lung ultrasound. This study used thoracic computer tomography as their gold standard. There are three pathologic entities that were evaluated in this study. Pleural effusion, alveolar consolidation, and alveolar interstitial syndrome. As you can see, the lung ultrasound has highly specific sensitivity and very reproducible to diagnose main lung pathologic entities. Lung ultrasound had an accuracy of 93% for pleural effusion, 97% for alveolar consolidation, and 95% for alveolar interstitial syndrome. Now let's go to image acquisition. Position when you want to perform lung ultrasound. Basically, Lung ultrasound can be performed in sitting position by anteriorly, laterally, or posteriorly. It also can be performed in prop up position at 30 to 45 degrees or in supine position. Usually, the sonographer will be sitting on the patient's right side. You need to adjust the bed to be at the same level with the sonographer's hip. The probe selection. You may use different types of probe to perform lung ultrasound. The linear probe, the curvilinear probe, and phase array probe. The linear probe has the highest frequency compared to the other two. It may be used to view the superficial structures and has the best image resolution. If you would like to review 
the sliding sign or the lung point, you should use the linear probe. If you want to look for interstitial syndrome, deeper structure or pleural effusion, I would suggest you to use curvilinear or phase array probe, which is moderate to low frequency probe. The axis and probe's orientation in basic lung ultrasound. You may perform lung ultrasound in longitudinal axis. In this axis, the probe's marker is facing upward cranially. In transverse axis, you have to place the probe between the superior and inferior rib. In this axis, the probe's marker should be facing toward the patient's right shoulder. There are two basic modes in lung ultrasound. The B mode, which is on the left side of the screen, which is called the brightness mode, and the M mode, or the motion mode, which is on the right side of the screen. As you can see, the most superficial structure is actually the skin. It goes further deeper and each layer is divided according to the anatomy. Before you begin to scan, you have to ensure the indicator to screen orientation is correct. The left side of the screen, which has an indicator sign marked by the orange color box, corresponds to the side of the probe marker with an indicator. Number two, you have to off the tissue harmonics. Some machine will have CHI. Number three, you have to adjust the depth. The focus of interest or area of interest must be two-thirds of the screen. As you can see on the right side of the screen, marked by the orange color rectangle, this is the ruler which suggests the depth of the scan area. The numbers presented is in centimeters. Next, you have to adjust the focus point. Mark by the red color square. Automatically, all ultrasound machine will put the focus point at the middle of the screening area. However, if you would like to adjust it, you can adjust the focus point according to the focus of interest. You may also increase the number of focus points. Lung topography. There are many topography for lung ultrasound. In Emergency and Trauma Department Hospital Kuala Lumpur, we use the 12th zone lung topography as a standard. Right side of the hemithorax have six zones and the left side also will have six zones. All these zones will be divided by four main longitudinal lines. The parasternal line, anterior axillary line, posterior axillary line and paravertebral line. In the middle, the horizontal line is an imaginary line across the nipple or the intercostal space. However, when you want to perform lung ultrasound in SARI or COVID-19 patient, you should use 16 sectors lung ultrasound. The line used is the mid-clavicular line, the mid-axillary line, and the paraspinal line. As you can see from the image, anteriorly at the mid-clavicular line, you can divide into zone 1, 2, and 3 for the right and the left side. At the mid-axillary line is zone 4 and 5 for both sides also. And at the paraspinal line, 
zone 6, 7 and 8 for both sides also. Here is the summary of EMIS acquisition. Ergonomics, the prop selection, the axis, the mode, the screen setup and the lung topography. Now let's go to the image interpretation. Now let's start with the normal images of lung ultrasound. The bad sign. This is the most important lung ultrasound image that you need to acquire. The wing of the bed is represented by the superior rib which is on the left of the screen and the inferior rib which is on the right side of the screen. The body of the bed is represented by the plural line. Take note, the duct structure or an echoic structure below the rib is the rib's shadow. The lung sliding. After you obtain the bad sign, now you have to focus at the plural line. As I mentioned before, the plural line is situated between the superior and inferior rib. It is the most hyperechoic horizontal line, which is produced by the visceral and parietal pleural surface. Now, do you see the shimmering line in between the structure? This is called positive sliding sign or presence of sliding sign. As the lung expand and contract during the respiration, the sliding sign will be present. Presence of sliding sign suggests that there is no pneumothorax of that particular intercostal space. After you quantify that the sliding sign is present, now you have to go back to the bad sign. You have to increase the depth. What we want to look for now is the A-line. A-line is the artifacts. It is a horizontal reverberation artifacts between the ultrasound probe and the plural line. As you can see, as shown by the orange arrows, all of them have equidistance from each other. A-line suggests a normal lung pathology. However, in certain conditions such as pneumothorax, pulmonary embolism, exacerbation of bronchial asthma which is non-infective, those kind of patients also may have A-line or A-profile. Just now we use B mode. Now let's go to M mode. For a normal lung, what you need to do is you have to obtain back the bad sign. And now push the M mode button. Move the cursor to the middle of the body of the bed. Push the button again. And now you can see at the bottom of the screen the M mode view. Seashore sign is a normal lung ultrasound finding in a normal aerated lung. This is described by also our father of lung ultrasound, Daniel Listerstein. The C is represented by the superficial structure, which is the skin and the subcutaneous fat. As you can see here, the most hyperechoic line is the plural line. It is, can be viewed in the M1 also. This is the line between the sea and the sand. 
Subsequently, as it moves deeper toward the bottom of the screen, this is the sand. As you can see from the image, this is the view when you are sitting at the bottom of the screen, which is you are sitting on the sand, looking at the sea. Therefore, it's called the seashore sign. Another lung ultrasound sign that you can view using the M mode is called lung pulse. Do you notice there is a longitudinal line which has a same equidistance when the heart contracts? This is the transmission of the heart pulsation through the lung. Therefore, you will see the longitudinal line every time the heart contracts. Not necessarily, it has to be equidistant. For example, in atrial fibrillation, the heart contraction will be different. Lung pulse suggests there is no pneumothorax. However, the specificity is quite low. Last but not least is the curtain sign. The curtain sign is produced by the expansion of the lung towards the costal fraining angle during the inspiration itself. The space above the diaphragm may be difficult to appreciate as the lung will veil the diaphragm itself. As you can see here, as the patient inhale, the lung expand and you can see the lung coming down. Now let's go to the pathological lung finding. E-line, E-line or emphysema line. This is an artifact which arise from the air pockets of the subcutaneous emphysema. Usually, you can't view any normal lung ultrasound structure below this E-line. These are the features of the E-line that you need to remember because later on you need to differentiate E-line with B-line. E-line will never arise from the pleura and E-line arise at the level above the ribs. Again, I repeat, you shouldn't see any normal ultrasound finding, which is our bad sign when you view E-line. Now, this is a focus zoom image. As you can see here, the features of E-line is completed. It arises just above the ribs. You can't really see any normal ultrasound structures below it. And if we zoom it, as you can see here, there is an air pocket and the E-line starts from there. Do you remember how to assess sliding sign? Yes, we need to assess sliding sign at the plural line. As you can see here, there is no lung sliding sign seen. There is no shimmering when the lung expanded and contracted. I need to emphasize the absence of sliding sign doesn't equate to pneumothorax. There are many diseases which have no sliding sign. For example, as listed in this table. The most common is in patients who have single lung intubation, which have atelectasis, complete atelectasis. It can also happen in obstruction by mucous plaque, foreign body, 
large tumor in the membranous or in patient who had pneumoectomy. Lung sliding sign also will be absent in patient who have extensive translobar pneumonia, severe ARDS, lung fibrosis. However, the method to exclude whether there is pneumothorax or not is by looking at the associated finding as listed in this table. In patients who have fluorodisease, disease, inflammatory malignant rural disease, and also who have disconnected ventilator circuit or paralysis of diaphragm muscle, also will not have any sliding sign. B lines. B lines is quite an important pathological lung ultrasound finding, especially in the area of COVID pneumonia. B lines are long white bands of hyperechoic artifacts, looks like comet tail, which indicates subpleural interstitial edema. As the fluid accumulated further due to the inflammatory process, the B line will become bigger or broader. A single B line or two B lines in one particular intercostal space is considered to be normal, especially at the dependent area. However, when you see three B lines and more at one intercostal space or if you see a broad B line, these are the pathological B lines. Do you remember the features of E lines? Now I want you to remember the features of B lines. The features of B line it is vertical bright line, laser light or comet tail light. It always arises from the pleural line. It spreads from the pleural line until to the bottom edge of the screen without fading. And when there is B line, you will not see A line at the area of the coverage. B line always moves synchronous with the lung sliding. Remember, we talk about the physiological B lines. As you can see in this picture, the upper row is the physiological B line, which is a normal one. However, the pathological B line is at the bottom row. As the fluid accumulates further, it will become collisions and the B line will become broader. This is typical finding in interstitial lung disease. This diagram shows the lung aeration that worsened with the disease progression. Picture A on the left is the normal lung ultrasound. Picture B and C represent the abnormal lung with B profile. Here you can see irregular pleura and early sign of consolidation. I need to highlight the B line will become broader as the disease progress further. Picture D is the C profile or the consolidation lung findings which appears after the B profile. Here, usually, you can see the non translobar and translobar consolidative lung ultrasound finding which I will describe later on. The sonographic sign of lung consolidation, which is the subpleural echopore region. This area is actually filled by the fluid. The subpleural consolidation are pleural based hypoechoic duct fluid collection that can be either wedge in shape, circular, or polygonal in nature. 
as you can see, shown by the white arrows. However, in critical care, the term subplural is actually useless. Each time a consolidation seen using ultrasound, whether it is small or huge, it is still subplural. Therefore, I would suggest you to use the term consolidation. The shred sign. Shred sign is also known as fractal sign. This is a static sonographic sign of lung consolidation. The consolidated lung tissues appears as a subpleural hypoacute region that has an irregular deep border abutting from erected lung. This sign is not seen in massive translobar consolidation. It only can be seen in non-translobar consolidation. As you can see in the clip, there is a marked demarcation between the normal aerated lung, which is on the periphery, and the non aerated lung, which is filled by the fluid in the middle. Other lung ultrasound finding of consolidation is the hepatization or tissue like consolidation. This usually can be found in translobar pneumonia. However, it can also be caused by something else. For example, in patients who had pulmonary infarction, cancer or metastasis, atelectasis, and lung contusion due to the non aerated lungs. Now let's learn the lung ultrasound finding in pneumothorax. If you can remember, the air is always on the top, while the fluid will be on the bottom, according to the gravity rules. Same goes to pneumothorax. Therefore, if the patient is in sitting position, you have to bear in mind the air might be accumulated at the superior part of the thorax. The stratosphere sign. This lung ultrasound finding of pneumothorax can be found in M mode. The sign came from the stratosphere view when an astronaut go to the space, as you can see in the picture. When there is no sliding sign, the stratosphere sign or barcode sign will be presented as a parallel horizontal line above and also below the plural line. Can you remember where is the plural line? Yes, it's the most hyperechoic line, which is the most whitish color line. This sign usually indicates pneumothorax. The lung point. The lung point is the interface. Once you find a lung point, you must complete the lung point. The lung point is the interface where the healthy lung starts and where the pneumothorax ends. As you can see here, shows by the red color arrow. On and off, you can see there is a lung sliding coming from the left side of the screen, from the superior rib. Okay, this is what we call the lung point. Lung point can be viewed in B mode only. This alternating patterns of pneumothorax suggest 100% specificity of pneumothorax. Once you find a lung point, you must complete your lung ultrasound examination by performing M mode. 
placed the cursor of the M mode at the long point. Here you can see there's an alternating stratosphere and seashore sign. When the lung expand and you can see the sliding sign, you will definitely see the seashore sign. And once the lungs contract and the pneumothorax is more obvious, you can see the stratosphere sign. What I want to emphasize in this particular slide is that different extension of pneumothorax will have different lung ultrasound finding depends on the position. For example, this patient, one of the side having tension pneumothorax, while the other side have occult pneumothorax. As you can see here, there are different ultrasound lung findings on this top part on the left, there is an alternating seashore and stratosphere sign. As you can see, there is a normal lung tissue with air accumulation. At the bottom, you can only see seashore sign. And probably you can see B line if you perform it in B mode because there is evidence of pulmonary conduction. However, on the right side, there is no seashore sign seen, only stratosphere sign seen. If you perform B mode, you wouldn't see any lung point. It is because the lung is collapsed totally and no aerated lung is touching the parietal pleura. Pleural effusion. This is characterized by hypoechoic O and echoic space which separates the visceral and parietal pleura. The accumulated fluid will act as an acoustic window. When you want to compare lung ultrasound versus chest X-ray in a PA erect position, lung ultrasound has a sensitivity, specificity, and also accuracy diagnosis by 100% compared to chest x-ray which only 65% to 81%. Lung ultrasound also can detect as minimum as 20 ml of pleural effusion compared to chest x-ray which can detect pleural effusion in PA erect position at 150 to 200 ml. Another obvious lung ultrasound finding that you can find in this clip is the spine sign. Positive spine sign suggests that you can see the thoracic vertebra above the diaphragm. In a normal aerated lung, the lung will obstruct the view of the vertebra. However, if there is a collection, which is pleural effusion, or there is a translocal consolidation of the lung, you will see the extension of the spine above it. Clip A. This is a complex septated exudative pleural effusion. You can see there is evidence of strands in a lattice-like patterns. This is typical finding in inflammatory lung disease such as pneumonia and pulmonary TB. Notice the movement of the atlatic part of the lung. This is called the jellyfish sign. Now let's see clips B. Clip B is also a complex septated exudative pleural effusion. Do you notice the starry-like movement within the non-homogeneous exudate? This is called the plankton sign. If you may find this sign in patients with lung malignancy or distant metastasis. If you tap the lung, the fluid will be likely serohemorrhagic. Clip C obtained from a dashboard injured patient. You found a non septated homogeneous hypoechoic collection which is correlates to hemothorax. And then in clip D, you found a homogeneous collection. 
However, upon further history, the patient just had removed test tube two weeks ago for massive pleural effusion. And currently, the patient presented to us with fever and shortness of breath. Looking at the lung ultrasound, this finding suggestive of lung and PMR. We already learned how to acquire and optimize an image. We already learned how to interpret the normal physiological finding and pathological finding of lung ultrasound. Now, we have to correlate the lung ultrasound finding with clinical presentation. Before you begin to solve all five cases in this presentation, here is a guide on how to use the animation. On the left side of the screen, as you can see, here is the brief history of the clinical presentation together with the brief physical finding and the vital signs. On the right side of the screen, there are four ultrasound probes. Click on each probe to be linked to the next slide which has the images or the clips. Please click on the red color icon if you want to review the chest x-ray. Click on the purple color icon if you would like to review the provisional diagnosis. Once you already link to the next slide, if you would like to go back to the case presentation, you have to click on this icon. 